180 miles per hour. Outside temperature minus 5 degrees. You know this aircraft, the 707, a familiar friend to today's air traveler. But here at American, we wanted more. We wanted to boost the power output of the plane to give you greater reserve power all along the line. We wanted higher cruising speed to stay on schedule, to make up time if need be. We wanted shorter takeoffs a faster climb to dim the noise over airport communities, and shorter landing runs. The two together, shorter takeoffs and landings, would make our jet service available to more airport. For ourselves, our target was more economical operation so that we could continue to bring you superior air flight at reasonable fares. This reach for something better is almost a capsule history of American Airlines. Fortunately, our engine manufacturers and aircraft suppliers have been, and are, of the same mind. We haven't much reverence for records. Our tendency is to break them. But then, our passengers haven't much inclination for unproductive travel time. The 707s were using Pratt & Whitney aircraft turbojets surprisingly simple propulsion devices. They were composed of a streamlined shell called a stovepipe. Inside, there was a compressor, a shaft, and joined to it at the other end, a turbine. All in all, a study in simplicity, a deceptive simplicity, much like modern art. Between compressor and turbine, there were burning chambers, and the fuel fed into them. Cold air entered the engine intake, and the compressors squeezed the air molecules into a tight mass, somewhat the way most of us pack a suitcase. The compressed air mixed with the fuel was ignited and flamed to extremely high temperatures. The resulting mass of expanding and accelerating hot gases fighting for an exit shot out of the rear end of the engine and quite obviously furnished an amazing amount of thrust or push. In the East Hartford plant of Pratt & Whitney Aircraft Division of United Aircraft Corporation, they had perfected that turbojet. Then they set about designing a better engine. Pratt & Whitney aircraft started with the same old basic engine, but just inside the air intake, they added a fan. Then they designed an overskirt or outer shroud. The new model took in three times as much air as the old and blasted half of it out through the openings on the side of the jet pod. The new engine was to develop 17,000 pounds of thrust, and the air itself became part of that power. It was called simply a turbofan, or fan jet. In building the new engine, Pratt & Whitney aircraft surrounded the hot jet stream with an envelope of accelerated cold air to permit smoother, less turbulent mixing of the jet stream with the atmosphere. The result, greater power. Tooled with the precision of a fine watch, assembled with infinite care, the turbofan moved down the line toward its target. More power, more thrust or push, and happily, less fuel consumption. The turbofan delivered more for less. The engines were everything American wanted, but added power, added speed, was to demand modification of the aircraft itself. 
So the 707s were flown into Boeing's West Coast plant for the work. True, the 707 offered little resistance to the air through which it passed. Its fuselage was tapered. Its wings swept back. Tail surfaces were swept back too. Yet with the increased power of the turbofan engine, Air piled up before the plane like giant hands trying to hold the aircraft back. These retarding hands, called shock waves or drag, fastened on the leading edges of the wings, on the nose, and on the edges of the tail surfaces. The first step against this conspiracy was to design and install a tapered added edge at the junction of fuselage and wing. Such a device, rounding out a corner, is known as a muff. The muff tapers the wing, permitting it to slice even more smoothly through the air. Drag is reduced. There was more. An airfoil, or wing, in cross-section resembles an elongated teardrop. The back edge has a flap, and when it is extended, it forms an addition to the wing surface. Now, flaps were also added to the front edge. In straight and level flight, they too are retracted, curving out during takeoffs or landings. Takeoffs or landings at lower speeds was the objective. A shorter run for each, an ease of entry and departure in smaller airports, American jet service for more places, more people. Added flaps resulted in an increase in the curve of the wing, and shorter, lower speed landings and takeoffs became a reality. At the rear end of the fuselage, work was planned on the fin and its rudder, that structure that rises above the horizontal tail surfaces. For even greater stability, three feet were added to the top of the tail fin. Strangely enough, modern aircraft are modeled less on the birds of the air, more on the fish of the sea. In this case, the resemblance became more marked, for we installed a ventral fin beneath the tail with added control as the objective. These modifications in design balanced and complemented the plus power of the new turbofan. Drag was greatly reduced, stability increased, control multiplied. We were ready to enter stage two of the jet age. Power and design had rolled back another frontier. Astro is the Greek word for star, a fitting name for the new jet. Astrojet it would be, the new 707 Astrojet. Pratt & Whitney powered, four turbofans that would tick off more than 10 miles a minute. American Airlines pioneered a joint project of competent and interested people working together to provide better air transportation for the patrons of American. Inevitably, every advance we make comes back to you, the experienced travelers who have made American your first choice. You are the ones who want to fly higher, farther, faster, and with greater comfort. For you, the quicker takeoff of the Astrojet its takeoff thrust increased 25%. For you, the quicker climb, with climb thrust increased about 30%. For you, reserve power for on-time dependability. Idlewild Airport, New York City.
and you move smoothly along the clearly marked highways of a modern traffic system. The Astrojet is ready, stage two symbol of the jet age. For our passengers, ground facilities mirror service in the air. At this new terminal, double-deck driveways eliminate time-consuming traffic tie-ups and spacious parking facilities are just a few steps away. Inside, your check-in is handled smoothly and effectively. Multi-position ticket counters plus electronic aids make for amazing efficiency. For you, the experienced traveler, the Astrojet takes its place in our schedule of service to more than 50 major cities in the United States, Canada, and Mexico. Only American has turbofan engines on all its jet aircraft. No one will travel faster than you will on an Astrojet. On the Astrojet, your cruising thrust has been increased something more than 20%. Your cruising speed is in excess of 600 miles per hour. The experienced traveler who wants dependability to fly fast, to really travel, travels American. American Flight 2, cruising at 32,000, ground speed 605. 